Hey, what's up guys? It's Smasher and today I'm bringing you an overview of the new DLC that was released today for Ghost Recon Future Soldier. This is the Arctic Strike DLC and I'm just going to give you a brief overview of basically everything that's added there and, and what's going on and uh, what I think of the guns compared to the old guns that they've added. They've added six new weapons. So first and foremost, this is match preferences. Now you can pick uh, regular battle or go to the new Arctic DLC maps. We have a new game mode. It's called Stockade. When players die, they respawn queue and go to a stockade. When a player gets a kill, one dead teammate gets freed from the stockade. Each team has an objective. Completing the objective frees all of their teammates from the stockade. And the game ends when every, one, every player from one team is in the stockade. I have not had a chance to get in one of those games yet, um, but I will and I will try and put up some, some video for it. Uh, unfortunately, seeing being first day DLC out, there is not very uh, enough people to get a game going. It just keeps crashing out on me. Uh, so anyways, that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna get that video up at some point in time in the next uh, week or so. So you guys will have that coming that way. So let's go in and check the new weapons that were added. You know, wait, I'm going to back up for here a second. One other point I'd like to go before we go into the weapons here is that we now have a new progression. Every single class was bumped up to level 60 now. Uh, unfortunately, you know, they bumped everybody up to level 60, but for some reason, they're not giving you any reward when you get there. I was kind of blown away uh, by the fact that they didn't give you any goodies when you got there. I mean, hey, what's the point of leveling up to 60 then? I mean, after whatever, 32 or whatever it is, there's really nothing to unlock. So, first and foremost, let's take a look at the, uh, the sniper class. Now, the sniper class, i got to be honest, I was pretty disappointed with uh, the weapons that came out. So the way I'm going to do this here is use a little bit of editing to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of the, next, the gun that I consider to be the next closest to it for that type, whether it's a submachine gun and so on and so forth, within that class and within that faction. So first off here is the sniper. And uh, right now we're doing the MP9, which is the new weapon, versus the P90. And you'll see right off the bat that this gun is very similar. Uh, what they did do is they knocked down the P90's control and added it to the maneuverability for the MP9. Now if you go through the stats, all the weapons, you'll see that they use another weapon typically, from the looks of it anyways, and they, and they just tweak the values and then create a new gun. So it has new attributes and so on and so forth. So next up here is the Type 05. Now the Type 05 has the same kind of power that the PP2000 has, and it has a decreased range, but it also has uh, a the exact same control and a a buffed maneuverability. So it looks like they took the PP2000 stats and they just decreased range and and bumped up new maneuverability. Now who's this going to be applicable to? anybody who wants to to run around as a sniper with a bullet hose because literally that's what it's doing is they're making you super fast and you can shoot from the hip you have no range but you're gonna be up front as a sniper in everybody else's business next up is the engineering class now I've got I'm level 50 on the engineer so I've got the L22 unlocked for both classes and I think that the L22 is above and beyond the best weapon for the engineers in the game prior to this so I'm not saying I'm, I'm discounting that now, but what I'm going to do is compare both weapons to the L22 because I think it is the gun to go up against as an engineer. So first off, we have the OCP-11. Now, this gun has about the same amount of power as the L22. Its range is decreased a little bit, and its control is just through the roof. The thing is a bullet hose. The moving, maneuverability is about the same. So this is going to be for a, a player that is, is not going to sit at mid-range and defend targets. This is going to be for a player who is, who is going to get play very aggressively as an engineer. And that's, that's the right way to play with, with that type of weapon. Next up we have the Mark 17 for the Ghost side. Now this weapon has a, a big increase in power over the L22. And its range is, is tip about the same. The control is about the same, but it loses a lot in maneuverability. So, to be honest with you, I am kind of liking this combination here because this is for somebody who's going to sit somewhere, set up camp, and they're going to guard an objective with a turret out. This, this gun is, the, the, the L22 is more geared towards running around. The Mark 17 is definitely going to be a weapon that you can set up post with 
and defend an objective effectively. Especially with the maneuverability being knocked down, you really don't care about that in that kind of situation where you have a turret out and then add that control and that power to it. I think it's a winning combination. So guys, let me back up a second here before I start on the Assault class. All these weapons in the Engineer and Assault that you're seeing in the side-by-side -side comparison, they all have the exact same attachments on there. So just, just so you know, exact same attachments, so I'm, you're not seeing any difference uh, between the guns. They're base, it's a baseline. So this gun has the same power, control, and maneuverability as the TAR-21. The F-2000, it's, it's, it's a neat weapon. The one made, there's two major differences. One, the range. So you see the range on the TAR-21 is better. Now, that's because you can't change the barrel out on the F-2000. But in the F-2000's defense, it does shoot at a higher uh, RPM than the TAR-21 does, which allows you to have, um, basically, you're suffering a little bit of range if without that barrel versus a TAR-21. But if you like to play up a little closer, you can put a lot more bull bullets on target just as fast and as controlled as the TAR-21. So it is, it is definitely a, a neat weapon. All right, so this is the last weapon here in the assault class. It's the S805. Now this is an interesting gun, and I, I I've been played with it a little bit, and it seems it seems pretty good. Um, it, it's got some interesting stats on it. First off, the power is decreased from the A91. I never really felt that the A91 had that kind of power to begin with. I really like the weapon, uh, but the range on the S805 is greatly increased, and so is the control over the A91. The, only, the maneuverability takes a hit, but again, if this is somebody who's setting up position and playing objective-based games, I mean, this may be the gun for you. This may be something that you really want to hang on to. The A91 is more of a forward weapon because it, it, it puts some more rounds on target. You can see the rate of fire there is a bit better. And on top of that, um, it it does really well. There's some power there for it. So, But the S805 good, looks like a pretty interesting weapon. I would definitely throw it on and give it a whirl. It looks like it may be benefit some people's play styles. Last but not least, let's have a look at the new achievements they added. Now I gotta say, again, pretty disappointed with the achievements they added. I love getting Chivos and for 800 points, only adding 35 points worth of achievements. Huge disappointment, guys. Anyway, so there's two of them. There's, stock, there's Tour Duty Moscow, which is the same standard, 25 points, win three maps on, on each of the new maps, Skyline Riot and Evicted. And then the second one is a is to do a under two minutes squad match where you eliminate the enemies in under two minutes. Now, again, squad matches. Please stop giving us squad match stuff until your squad match situation is fixed up. I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of problems with squad match since this game came out. So, anyway, thanks guys for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.